He is mine. He is mine. Joy in my soul, peace in my mind. He is mine. He is mine. Jesus, I know. He is mine. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, where he, Jesus, truly is mine. He is mine, and that's why I'm doing this thing, (laughs) because I have the Lord with me. Do you have him with you or in you? Well, praise God. If not, you better get him because you're going to need him. As the old song says, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. You're going to need him. You're going to need him everywhere you go. And so today we're picking up in the 20th chapter of the book of Genesis. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, feel free to or make sure you if you if the video is a blessing to you to like it and uh, subscribe and share and all those good things that help us get the word out further and further. If you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comments section or uh, in the uh, uh, you can shoot us an email, too. So. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the word. We'll open up with a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to start in Genesis chapter 20. Lord, we thank you so much uh, again for giving us the opportunity to go through your word. We pray, God, that it be a blessing to each and every hearer. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 20, verse 1, and Abraham journeyed from thence towards towards the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar all these specific locations here. Now, we last saw Abraham when he was looking out and seeing the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now we see him on the move again, and it doesn't specify why he's on the move. Uh, Maybe it was because the fire from heaven left the whole area needing to be evacuated. We we just don't know. But, But here he is moving southward, and now he's staying in a place called uh, uh, Gerar. And so verse two, and Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Now, does this sound familiar? It should, because Abraham literally did this exact same thing back in chapter 12, when he went down to Egypt and lied about Sarah being his sister. Uh, uh, And he did it there because he was afraid uh, of them uh, killing him and taking her. Uh, Now, we've seen Abraham grow so much since chapter 12. I mean, as far as his trusting in God goes, he's he's almost like a different man uh, from then in a lot of ways. Uh, God has brought him a mighty long way. And yet in this area, in this area of of, of trusting God against uh, this type of enemy, and in this situation, Abraham still needs work. He still needs work and trust in God in these foreign lands he goes to. And maybe you can identify. Perhaps there's some area in your life where you're having some difficulties just giving it over to God. I can tell you about it. (laughs) If you won't testify, I will. (laughs) But Abraham is struggling to, to, to give this part over to God and trusting God with it. Uh, and, and, and like I said, maybe you can identify with that. Maybe it's some sinful habit uh, that you that you run to when things get difficult. Maybe, maybe now you, you are you are bound to people's opinions of you and you feel like Abraham here where you got to lie or embellish the truth to make people think better of you than they would otherwise. Well, whatever it is, I've got some news for you. God is not going to ignore any issues or problems or sin in your life. In fact, you're going to keep running into this issue over and over until you turn it over to him. See, uh, that's why we're seeing this again. You see, we saw it in chapter 12. It's the exact same thing here. We're seeing it again for that reason. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, includes this second account of Abraham lying about Sarah being his wife because God's got to deal with him on this until it's it's done and dealt with. God is getting ready to bless Abraham with the son he had been wanting. But before God can do that, he's got to confront this sin, this issue. And as we as we read, uh, as we've read several times on this podcast over at Hebrews chapter 12, 12, we'll turn there now, chapter 12, verse 7, it says there, if ye endure chastening or correcting, God dealeth with you as with sons, 
For what son is he whom the father chastens or corrects not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You see, God deals with with Abraham here, and he deals with you and me if we're his as a father, (laughs) and he deals with the sin in our lives. In other words, uh, to put it uh, more plainly, the Lord is pulling out his switch. (laughs) Now, some of you may not be familiar with the reference to a switch. Well, uh, for those of you that are, you know, when mama said go get a switch, that means you're about to get a beat down or a whooping, okay? (laughs) God pulls out his switch and he's getting ready to correct Abraham. And that's what he does. Over at uh, St. John, the 15th chapter and the first verse, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman or the gardener. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it or, 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 or cuts it, that it may bring forth more fruit. <laughs> you see, he's pruning us. He's, he's, he's fashioning us. If you won't bear fruit, he takes you away. But if you are bearing fruit, he's going to cut you. He's going to prune you so that you can bring forth even more fruit. <laughs> God is pruning his people. And if you're his, that's what he does. Uh, And that's what we're going to see here in this story with Abraham. And that's what you'll see in your life if you're a child of God. I recall a lady one time, she she was walking with the Lord and she, uh, uh, she told me, she said, it seems like when everything's going well, uh, it just seems to keep happening. Out of nowhere, somebody does something or says something to me, she said. And, 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 and it would cause her to always go off on some, on that person or curse them out. And it just always seemed to happen in that pattern. Things would be going well, and then all of a sudden somebody does something, and she has to cuss them out, and, 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 and it just goes around in circles. And I asked her, do you remember how that the children of Israel had to keep going around that same mountain for 40 years because they didn't trust God? <laughs> well, that's what was happening in her life. Until you learn how to give it to him. And as the old song says, hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. Until you trust him with it, you're going to keep going around that same mountain until you learn the lesson. You see, when you're his, he's going to teach you the lesson. <laughs> it may hurt. Uh, I've had a few a few whippings myself, but you're going to get the lesson, you see. And so uh, let's read on here. Verse three, but God, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, uh, uh, for she is a man's wife. Look at God stepping in here. <laughs> Look at God stepping in here and, have, and, and making sure that nothing happens to Sarah. By the way, Sarah is about 90 years old here. And so the natural question is, why would the king want a 90-year-old as one of his wives? Well, I think it's for two reasons. One practical and and um, one uh, uh, miraculous. The practical or the obvious reason uh, can be found over there at, at Psalm 145 and 20, which says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked <laughs> he will destroy. And then over at Psalm uh, 103, uh, 103, verse 5, says, speaking of God, who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. You see, friends, God preserves his people. <laughs> He's a preserver. I've seen it. I know a lady, uh, Mother Anderson, who is 103 years old. I said 103 years old. And Mother still drives wherever she wants. <laughs> and when I talk to Mother, Mother remembers things that I've forgotten and tells me about. <laughs> God can preserve his people. Uh, and so that's the, that's, the, uh, 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 that's, that's the practical or obvious reason. Now, the second reason is miraculous. You see, Sarah is getting ready to have a baby. God has already promised that. And I believe God is renewing her here and preparing her womb for the child. And Sarah is being beautified by that. I think she probably looks probably about 40, 50 years younger. (laughs) 
Uh, don't tell me what God can't do, friend. Don't tell me that. Now, verse six. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst uh, this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. God says, I knew you were tricked, I, and I stopped you from doing wrong. He's a merciful God. <laughs> He's a merciful God. Verse 7 says, Now therefore rest restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if you restore her not, thou shalt, uh, thou that, thou shalt, wait a minute. <laughs> if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Mm. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears, and the men were so afraid. Uh, and then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? Now, God says uh, up there in verse 7, uh, listen, Abraham is a prophet. In fact, he's the first person in Scripture to be called uh, a prophet. Uh, and, and, and here is the, the quote-unquote prophet lying and deceiving. <laughs> what a horrible witness and example this is. It really is a shame when people who say they know God act shamefully like this. And Abimelech is right. He's right to be angry. But you know what I find interesting? Abraham is all the way wrong from the beginning here. He's wrong. He's lied. He's deceived. He's wrong. But God doesn't say he was a prophet. God says he is a prophet. He's wrong, but he's mine. And you better not harm him because I'm going to take care of him because he's mine. You see, God is a father who has not given up on his child. Uh, and so Abimelech, you may not like it. He may be wrong, but he's mine. And I love that about God. Sometimes I've been wrong, but he corrects me. You better leave me alone. You better keep your mouth off his people. Let him correct his folks. Uh, David had a chance to kill Saul. He said, I won't touch him because he's God's anointed, you see. And so don't put, don't, 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 don't let God do the correcting of those that are his. And so verse 11 says, and Abraham said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place and, and they will slay me uh, for my, for, for my, for my wife's sake here. You know, I, I, I got good excuses. He says here, <laughs> Abraham's got a whole bunch of excuses. He says, y'all don't know God like I do. So I, I figured it'd be all right. <laughs> y'all, y'all probably would have killed me. I, I figured so it's your fault. You see, uh, and, and here, verse 12, and yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. She is my sister, he says. And so he says, it's only half a lie. <laughs> it's, all, it's only partially a lie. But I'm sorry, Brother Abraham, but half the truth is a whole lie. <laughs> There's no partial lie. It's either true or it's not. That's a whole lie. And, and by the way, that's why the law of Moses doesn't say thou shalt not lie. It says, thou shalt not bear false witness. You see, bearing false witness can involve some truth. Uh, but, but, but even in involving that truth, you are still trying to mislead. That's what false witnessing is. It's like when a little boy answered the phone and he went to get his mama. And he said, uh, mama, is so-and-so. And, and mama didn't want to talk to so-and-so. So, so she grabbed some rope wrapped it tightly around her hands and said, son, tell so-and-so I'm a little tied up right now. <laughs> that's a, okay, maybe that's a bad joke, but that's a false witness, you see. <laughs> you you want to be truthful in situations, even if the truth isn't as impressive as a lie. You want to tell the truth, friends. And so verse uh, 13 says, and it came to pass when God caused me to wonder from my father's house that I said to her, this is my kind, this is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah as his wife. And Abimelech said, behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah, he said, Behold, I have given thy brother 
a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all the other. Thus she was reproved. Uh, you know what Abimelech is doing here? It looks like he's being very nice when you read it, doesn't it? <laughs> but he's not. That's why he says to Sarah, thy brother. You see, he's being sarcastic. He's saying, basically, you're a so-called prophet of God, but you've come down here to my land and you're lying and deceiving. And I'm honest. I'm giving you stuff here. <laughs> I'm the real righteous one, and, and, and I'm not even called a prophet. And you know what? That's got to hurt, Abraham. <laughs> That's got to hurt. That's got to make him feel about three feet tall. <laughs> when a child of God is corrected by a pagan, a man of the world who doesn't even really know God, that hurts. I remember at the time I was, I, I, I just really started walking with the Lord seriously. And, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was a, a babe in Christ, as they, as they call us. And I was at work and this guy really got on my nerves. I mean, really got on my nerves. The, they say you get on your last nerve. If I had one left, he's dancing on that thing. <laughs> and one day I let this guy have it. I went in on him. There were people around. I didn't care. I went off on him. And I went so hard at him, and, and, and I'm just ready, to, and if I'm confessing now, I'm ready to knock him out, you know, and all that. <laughs> well, here I am, Mr. Christian, Bible under my arm, going off wild and people looking and all of that. And you know what happened? The Holy Ghost began to convict me. <laughs> the Holy Ghost did that, and I had to go and apologize to this man. This man who had no regard for God, he didn't even accept the apology. And it was so embarrassing and humbling. And I didn't ever want to do that again. And I think that's what's happened to Abraham here. We don't read of him doing this again. His son will do the same thing later on. But Abraham has learned his lesson. And, 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 and that's what we said at the beginning. When you're dealing with God, he that hath begun a good work in you, will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. You're going to get the lesson. <laughs> you're going to learn the lesson when you're God's child. Verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. He's still God's man, <laughs> and God uses him here. And if you fail, listen to me, guess what? He can still use you too. You can get up off of wherever you are. Stop feeling bad for yourself. Stop uh, uh, feeling, uh, making yourself feel guilty. Go to the cross of Jesus Christ where the blood was shed for your sin and for mine. Accept what he did for you and go on. <laughs> go on living for God the best you know how, asking him to give you his Holy Spirit to empower you to live for. Amen and amen. God bless you for joining us today. We'll cut off there and pick up again next time. Until then, God bless you.